Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Lydia and today I wanted to do just a real brief overview of one of my, I guess I would say one of my daily practice routines. Um, I start every day probably like a lot of you do um, doing a daily pool and um, if you're new to tarot I would definitely encourage you to do a daily pool just because simply put it gets you more and more and more familiar with um, the imagery in your decks gives you a deeper meaning helps to build your intuition um, and so I've really tried to make that like a root practice for myself and today I pulled out the White Sage Tarot, and it's a very common deck. You can get this on Amazon, I think, right now. It's actually, um, as of today's date, which is June 6th, this is actually a little under $20. So it's very, very um, affordable and, yeah, easy to tote around. It comes in a little tin. I'm, I'm not going to do a show me, show me because um, there's plenty of YouTube uh channels that you can watch that are going to give you a complete run through of this deck. Um, today's focus is going to just be how I'm incorporating um, my daily pool, I guess, into my practice and some tips and tricks of, of like what I've been learning as I've been digging a little bit deeper. I'm using this particular deck specifically because I have been having challenges with it. Um, I want to say today is maybe my third or fourth time using the deck and every time prior to today I've had I've had some challenges just connecting um I'll say you know for my purposes because I'm going to consider myself a beginner this little white book just isn't enough um also because I'm not familiar at all with chakras um that portion of it I think is kind of confusing to me although today I've, I've kind of discovered how you can incorporate um, these little truths or these little energies into your reading and I think I'm going to continue to do that more and obviously research chakras more because I think they can probably add um, some more insight to your readings so so that's definitely helpful and something I will put out there and say I'm going to challenge myself to um, you know, learn and, and explore. So um, with that said, I just kind of wanted to go through how I do my daily pool because a lot of people do it differently. And um, I've just had to find a way that works for myself because I feel like the way that everybody else has been doing it really just doesn't explain it in enough detail. And I'm not going to sit here and say that my method will um, be explained and you'll have a great aha moment when you leave this tutorial or this, you know, this little video I put up today. Um, I'm not going to have that much of an ego about it, but I do think that it's cool to see everybody's perspective on their readings because then you do develop a deeper sense of what you hope to get out of them, if that makes sense. So um, I typically do a three card pool and um, let's see, I'm trying to just get my cards together here for you. And these, these were random. I shuffled probably seven times. Oh no, maybe even more because I was in between meetings. I'm in between working. Um, so like in between, you know, just when my hands are idle, I, I was, I was shuffling, 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 shuffling. And this was how the cards presented themselves. So I had the Ace of Swords upright, Justice reversed, and then the Queen of Cups um, upright as well. And so let's just kind of go through what I'm asking the cards to tell me because I know that's that's like a big question too, right? I never, well, I've learned early on, let's say, to never just like randomly turn cards over because I feel like the cards need you to give them something more, right? So typically I'm asking them like, you know, what what will my day entail? Like, give me just like a really brief overview, you know, of the things that might be challenges ahead or the things that I'm going to need to work on, the things I'm going to need to be mindful of and aware of for the day. And kind of give that to me within three cards so that I can tell a story about that. 
that's kind of how I how I frame this little spread, if you will. Um, and once I figured out that particular framing, I will say 100% that the cards gave me more detailed information, like kind of met me in the middle and then gave me something to work with. Because before that, prior to that, the readings were like really confused. Um, and I and, and I think part of that could even be that I'm still trying to um, gain intuition, right? Um, develop my intuition. So, so there's a little bit of that struggle um, on top of the fact that I just wasn't being clear enough when I was questioning. So that's kind of how I how I um, present my question to my cards daily, and then I shuffle and I shuffle really mindfully, and I shuffle until I feel like it's enough. And if it seems you know, like, like I've shuffled 30 times and it's not enough. Well, then I just keep going more, you know, if I have the time for it. Right. Um, but yeah, so, um, these were the cards that were presented to me. Ace of Swords upright, Justice reversed, Queen of Cups upright. And one thing I learned today actually was that this red ribbon, um, regards the root chakra. And so what's interesting about that is just when you look at this little teeny um, little pamphlet that's that's given to you, the root chakra means be grounded and take up your space. And so this this reading actually came right after a phone call I had and I was in a meeting um, and and I won't say things got a little bit heated, but I will say that I, I could tell that I needed to stand my ground, right? And I could tell um, that because I started getting uncomfortable. I struggle a lot with anxiety and I struggle with um, telling people exactly what I just need to say because I just want to be nice about it. But sometimes there's really not a nice way. You just have to be direct. You just have to find a tactful approach and get it out. And this card was telling me like, you know, because swords are all about thoughts. And I just, I, I had this moment like in the call where I was like, no, you know what? You're going to stand up for yourself and for the business. And you're going to say the things that need to be said. And you're going to be direct and you're going to be thorough. And you're still going to be respectful. You're still going to be business professional, but you're going to be savvy in your approach. And, you know, you may not be able to give this other person the answers that they're seeking right now that's okay. Um, you can ask them to put the question in writing and send an email and present it to upper management and um, have time to reflect and discuss and then get back to them, you know? And this is all, you know, like very forward thinking, very upright in your approach, very direct, um, holding your ground, sticking up for yourself, you know, being clear, um, being forthright, um, being rooted, being grounded, right? And 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 it being the ace to me also signified like this was the first time I've maybe ever um, appreciated that moment for myself and understood that I was having that moment and that it was okay, it was okay, and it was it was acceptable and it was actually a good thing, um, you know, to to be as direct as I was being and to not have any apologies about it, you know. Um, that's basically what I got from that. And um, moving into justice, if we just use this same example, um, kind of as a play out for, for like the rest of my day. Well, now, you know, things are murky, right? Like now, um, you know, my side of the story has been put out there, put on the table. And now, now we're weighing the pros and cons, right? Now we're, now we're balancing um, trying to see what we can make work and what's not feasible from a business standpoint, right? Um, and, and so it being reversed, justice being reversed signifies that it's kind of like a holding pattern too. Like, like I won't say it's hangman in suspension because obviously the hangman in suspension isn't here, but I need to wait for justice to be given, right? Like I need to wait for truth to be restored. I need to wait to see how this is all going to shake out. And and this is huge to me because I have really, a really big tendency to think that I can be in control of everything. And that's laughable, right? Because um, really, we can't control anything um, besides ourselves. And sometimes that's questionable too, right? 
Um, so, so this was just kind of telling me, you know, like you did everything you can do and, and now we just have to see what happens. And then the queen of cups, what was so funny about this card, um, this was brilliant. Let me see if I can find it in the book rather quickly for you. Um, because in the book, upright, nurturing, gentle, this nurturing queen is gentle and relaxed. Sipping on some chamomile tea, she reminds you to slow down and taste your food. Being busy is so overrated. And I thought, you know, that is adorably fitting, right? Because she's like, Laura, just chill, like just relax. Like you literally did everything you could and there's nothing more to worry about. Um, don't be contained by like, you know, like, like there's other, there's other things you need to do. There's other things you should be putting your focus on. And then again, maybe there isn't like, like don't sweat the small stuff. Like don't just make busy work just to make busy work. Like here's some chamomile tea. Like you did the job now go relax. Like, and that was huge for me to kind of see. And it was what prompted me to create the video actually, because, um, I get so caught up in, in like, you know, catastrophizing the most minute details of everything in life. I'm sure I'm not alone in this. And, and that's why I mention it. And, um, you know, like I've said, I'll, I'll be a little bit personal in, in my, um, in my channel because I think it's worth noting that you're not alone in this. Um, and yeah, for her to come up and kind of say like, you, you did the right thing and, and don't sweat it now. Just sit back. Was just like, almost like, ah, oh, I can breathe a sigh of relief now. That was, that was what I needed. And then overall, overall it was like, wow. Um, all of a sudden I get, I get a connection with the white sage tarot. Like all of a sudden I get it. And I don't know if it's, you know, ultimately because I have been kind of like really practicing um, and challenging myself to learn the cards, to try to intuit deeper meanings. Um, and today maybe they just clicked. Or maybe like, you know, this deck actually today decided, today's the day I want to speak to her. <laughs> you know, like today's the day I guess I'll, I'll make sure I have something to reply back to her. When she asks me, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her what she wants, you know, and, and so maybe I had to work for it a little bit. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Um, but this deck will now become, um, used a little bit more. I think I'll put it into the rotation a little bit more than I was because today, um, you know, it, it kind of, it proved itself to me. So, and I just, I just wanted to share that with you guys because, um, to me, this is something, like I say, that I think tarot tube could use more in terms of like self-reflection and self-healing and really digging deep and figuring out what you struggle with. Cause I told you, like I do struggle with being direct in my approach and with trying to say things tactfully and meaningful and, and feel like I'm being heard, feel like I'm voicing what needs to be said. That's a huge struggle for me. And I'm not there yet. Just because this card showed upright does not mean I'm, I, you know, I'm at the beginning of this phase in my life. Um, we haven't mastered it yet now, you know, and, and, and these are telling me, you know, you did the right thing, but there's only so much you can do too, you know? So, so it was just, it was, it was an aha moment that I felt like was worthwhile sharing because then maybe it gives you a, a deeper perspective too. So there you go. Cheers.